Round 4 KTFO Info Extra Clips So, hey, shut it off! You having a raven there, Bob? No. I mean, they're checking out the sound system. Wait, look, just hold a second. No worries. Hey, I'm doing a Zoom call. Shut that, shut that off. <laughs> Okay. Here. The Bible tell us that silence is golden, but my ears can still hear and my eyes can still see. The Bible also tell us to be swift to hear and slow to speak. You see, what you don't understand, thief, what you did is what my people deal with all the time. Someone cheating them from providing their greatness into the world, but it's a burden that we cut off only to make us stronger. I saw in the first fight where Ricky had him was pulling down your gloves to put your fist in an improper position. Y'all tried the same method the second time, but this time you scratched flesh out of my ears, which caused my ears to bleed. It's impossible for a brand new 10 ounce glove to bend, to keep a smushed in form, or to have loose space. I highly believe you put something hard in your glove. Something the size and the shape of an egg weight. Here's the reason why the side of my face swelled up in an egg weight form. And it left a dent in my face as well. <laughs> but in the midst of it all, you still couldn't keep this king down. You would have had to kill me. In the end, it took a crab in a bucket referee and a disloyal trainer to throw the towel in just to stop me. <laughs> Proverbs the sixth chapter 30 31 says excuses may be found from a thief who steals because he is starving but if he is caught he will have to pay back seven times what he stole even if he had to sell everything in his house and payback is coming No, that clip was brilliant, Bob. Yeah. Went viral. 
This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global, joined by Bob Aram in the bubble. Of course, uh, the monster uh, features tonight. Um, that's to come. But Bob, let's just get straight into it. Uh, I'm sure you've seen Deontay Wilder's video about Tyson Fury uh, tonight. What have you made of his uh, comment? Well, you know, Fury, I, we haven't heard a lot from Wilder. So he's probably been watching television. And all I can say about his uh, uh, Instagram post uh, is that he's mimicking uh, Donald Trump. In other words, lie, come up with conspiracy theories, do anything but put the blame on yourself. Now, let me explain what I mean. First, for him to castigate uh, Kenny Bayless, the referee, and uh, Mark Breland, uh, his chief cornerman, uh, the way he did is disgraceful because they acted properly and they saved Wilder's life from taking any further punishment when he was completely out and getting thrashed uh, by Tyson Fury. Uh, secondly, to talk about the gloves the way he did uh, is disgraceful because uh, you have to understand the situation with the gloves in the state of Nevada where the fight took place. The night before, the day before the fight, at the weigh-in, the gloves are presented to the commission who inspects the gloves. Each side then examines the gloves, and then each fighter picks a pair of gloves as the gloves they're going to use in the fight, and a second pair in case something happens to the glove during the fight that they could use. All right. Then the gloves are secured by the commission, and they are kept in a safe place so nobody can tamper with them. The night of the fight, a commission inspector brings the gloves that each fighter has signed his name on to the respective fighter who has already put on his wraps, approved hand wraps, approved by the commission, hand wraps being uh, signed, and the gloves are put on in the presence of the inspector that brought the gloves and the inspector that's assigned to the room. Nobody, nobody can tamper with the gloves. I mean, what he has done is taken something probably from a movie that used to happen maybe in the 30s and 40s and used that as a conspiracy to explain how he got beaten and decisively beaten by Tyson Fury. It is reprehensible for him to do something like that. And it is defies all belief uh, for anybody who knows how these things happen. Now, the normal fan doesn't understand. They may think you can bring your gloves to the fight and you can doctor the gloves and they inspect but they don't expect, well, that can happen with gloves, at least in Nevada where the fight took place. So what Wilder said is a sham. It's a Donald Trump kind of sham. I think, Bob, uh, the Nevada commission must be the most strictest commission in the world, so you're definitely not getting away with that in, in Las Vegas. There's nothing to get away with. You don't handle the glove. The commission handles the gloves. Yeah. Uh, he's got people like Al Heyman and, and Shelley Finkel around him advising him. What, why do you think he's making these comments, Bob? I mean, there are people around Donald Trump advising Donald Trump. Does that help Donald Trump not to make comments? No. People now think that they're smarter than anybody else and can make comments like that. And I am sure that Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel if those comments had been run by them before Wilder made them, would have not would have told him, "Hey, don't go there because you can't 
make up conspiracy theories which are so easy to disprove. Have you seen any of the comments from Deontay Wilder over the last couple of days? I sent him a message, to be honest with you. I was like, listen, bro. Wilder? Yeah, Wilder. I was like, listen. Just brush yourself, dust yourself off, man. Just get back in the ring. You know, this whole thing of, you know, next minute you talking about a black empowerment, this and this. This is a fight fight. This is fight game. You lost the fight. You know what you do? Brush yourself Bounce back on you to your rematch. You know, it's coming excuses. He had this in his glove. He had that in his glove. Water was, uh, water was spiked. Was the water spiked? How does he know the water was spiked? The muscle relaxing. You know. This is why... This, you know what? Who knows? <laughs> this is why I carry my own water. <laughs> I don't trust no one. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, my own water. I bring my own water from my house, and I bring the bottles, and I wash them four times, and I keep it in my room, and that's it. You know, but it's just coming with excuses, man. Just take the bro, just take the fight. You got beat. Everybody loses a fight, and just come back. Just keep crying about this nonsense. I don't know why. Is he when is he fighting again? Oh shit. There's another bro brother going down the drain. We saw obviously Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez. I know you're a big Teofimo fan. Um, mm -hmm. We obviously saw post-fight Lomachenko going for surgery. We've seen pictures yesterday yeah. where he was stitched up all over his shoulders. Loma hasn't come out himself and said that I lost my, the fight because of my shoulder. We know team members have put things out there, but would you like to see a rematch? No, wouldn't. He got beat fair and square. It's as simple as that. Loma's a, a great, isn't he? He's an all-time great, but he got beat fair and square. Every, people can be carrying injuries. I know many athletes that have carried injuries that you can nurse, you can get the injections and everything. I'm sure he did have an injury um, going into it. But you can, I know, you, I know many athletes that have had an injury that they've nursed for three years and then they have their surgery. He's just chosen to do it then. So I think it's poor form from whoever's saying that. Like it's Pacquiao did it after the Mayweather. I don't have respect for, for, for that. Like saying, oh, I mean, Lomachenko didn't look bad in the, in the last couple of rounds, did he? His, 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 his shoulders seemed to be working fine the last, in the last rounds. He just lost to a bigger and better man on the night. That's just, it's just the people are just stuck in their ways or... Loma's unbeatable. He lost the Loma check. He is beatable. Tiafimo beat him fair and square. Tank Shorty. I want you so motherfucking bad. Floyd was scared before the sixth round. I'm letting everybody know this shit now. Because Leo was actually doing it. Leo had a good little game plan. He just couldn't stick to it. He's not defensively sound. Leo not defensively sound, so he, he's, he's able to get hit with wide-ass, loading up bad shots like that. I'm a real dog, Slim. When I was watching that fight, all I was doing was licking my motherfucking chops. All I was doing was licking my chops. Till hopefully after this fight, hopefully after this motherfucking fight, Floyd grow some nuts and say, you know what? Fuck it. We'll fight Gurn. We'll fight him. Because I don't want nobody else but you. Fuck a Leo. Fuck a Leo. Yeah, I bet Floyd did tell him to wait. Floyd had to tell him to wait. They better do something. Because I'm still on his ass. I'm still on his ass. Everybody doing this talking. Talking about somebody duck Devin Haynes. Ain't nobody duck no motherfucking Devin Haynes. They sent the bullshit out his contract or term sheet that ain't make no sense at all. You know what I'm saying? And they already was agreeing to a date that they already was locked in on. They was already in training camp for that date. That's how that shit works. But maybe I'll see. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what. When is Canelo fighting? I don't know, whenever he wants to fight. I'm ready to make big fights. 
Uh, let's see. Come to Box House in Newport. You know what? I've actually wanted to. I saw this painting there that was incredible. So I'll get to you guys literally really soon. Filipino fans, what's up? What's going on? You know, when I think about the Filipino fans, I think about uh, Joy Koi, how funny he is. It's freaking hilarious. Um, let's see. My man. All right. Thumbs up. How do, we, how do I get hair like you? Dude, it costs a lot of money, dude. <laughs> uh, let's see. I saw you walking one time in downtown LA. Oh, okay. Fail, repro, okay. Could you come to France? Jesus, would love to come to France. It's beautiful out there. Cal, we know that Sky Sports uh, won't be airing this fight. That is confirmed. Eddie Hearn uh, has had a lot to say about this fight, saying that the money's not there really to make this fight, etc. Have you got a response to Eddie's comments? Because we haven't heard from you for a long time. Eddie's done a lot of interviews about this fight with, with just, yourself and Terence. Let me tell you, Eddie has always been there, involved in you know, involved with his fight. You know, for for six, seven weeks. You know, from from today, he's always been involved. He's always wanted. You know, he knew the date, fourteen for November. He knew. We always kept him in the loop. All he had to do, all he had to do, was get on the phone and phone Uncle Bob. But he was more interested in in earning two Bob. You know, that's that's that that's that's where it is. All he had to do was get you know, sign this sign the contract for for Brooke. But he was more interested in signing books. You know that's what that's what that's what that's what's happened with we Eddie and there. You know, listen, I've been, I got him out of jail with a Golovkin fight. You know, with a pay per view slot right there. I saved the day again. I've always been a Sky Sports fighter. I've been in with Porter, with Spence, Golovkin. I've made some amazing nights with Sky Sports. The fans, I want to give back for for you know Sky people who are subscribed to Sky Sports. I want I want them my fans to see to see to see me fight the pound for pound king in Crawford and see me take that title back. You know, but, but like I've just mentioned about Eddie, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not come off the way that I wanted it to come off and be with Sky Sports. So I'm absolutely gutted, but I know one thing, that the, the British fans will see this fight and uh, it'll be on a platform, they will be able to see it and I, I'll release that maybe Monday that that'll come, that will come across. But I'm gutted that Sky Sports, it went on there, but he's having these, he's having these, um, these pay-per-view fights, what are not even, you know, there's not even no titles on the line. Don't get me wrong, you know, Chisora, Usyk, White, Pavotkin, you know, a, a great fights, but Brooke Crawford, come on, man. The fans, they, 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 they're entitled, they are more than entitled to have that, have that fight there for the fans, but like I've just said, that, that's where it is. Um, I will ask you about Kell Brook's recent interview that he gave where he had some obviously comments about yourself etc and Sky regarding um, his fight with Crawford on the 14th so yeah I know you probably would have seen the highlights of that interview or heard about it so what would be your response to that? Um, I was really disappointed to be honest with you <coughs> um, and I was quite angry I think you would have got a very different interview from me if you would have done it on Friday um, but, you know, as they say, stay classy. So I don't want to go into too much detail about Kel's career. Um, but I will say this, because I do feel like 99% of what was said was total bollocks. So I do feel like, you know, having seen my social media and you know, responding to people's DMs, I should give you the truth. I, I don't know if that was Kel talking or whether that was someone feeding him with, with rubbish. But let's just start with the Crawford fight and the Sky situation. When Amir Khan boxed Terence Crawford, Kel Brook flew out there. He was talking to Top Rank. And he had meetings with Top Rank, probably about that fight and probably about uh, other fights as well, which didn't go down very well with me, to be honest with you. I'm an all, all or nothing kind of guy. They come back, they couldn't get the Crawford fight. So they asked me to do a fight. 
and they asked me to do a fight and he fought Mark DeLuca. Okay. And then after the DeLuca fight, they carried on their conversations with top rank. I was never involved with one conversation they had with top rank regarding this fight. No consultation, no opinion from me, no part of the negotiations of the deal whatsoever. They chose to do this all themselves. Right? Now, was that because they didn't want to pay me? Or was that because they wanted to go their separate way? Once you turn your back on me, don't ever turn around and start walking back to me. You're either with me or you're not. And if you're with me, I will give you everything, as I've done for that young man for eight years. And I'll come on to that in a minute. So they've gone their own way. They're, they're, they're dealing with top rank, as, as Kel called him, Uncle Bob, right? No problem. I accepted that. I'm not involved. He's gone. Don't he, you know, I know, I have no problem with that. He's at the end of his career. He wants as much money as possible. No problem. Then, top rank, call Sky. Right. Brooke v. Crawford, pay-per-view. Yeah. Sky turn around and say, no. And then they ask him to make an offer. Anyway, still at this point, I'm not, I've not even been you know, spoken to about the rights or nothing at all for this fight. When they realise they're in trouble, I get a phone call from Kel's dad. Oh, Eddie. Oh, it's got to be on Sky. We've been with you from the start. You know, this was, by the way, two, two, three weeks ago when I was ill, when I was in isolation. It's cool. It's got to be on Sky. It's got to be on Sky. Why the fuck's it got to be on Sky? You've, you've, you've walked your path, mate. You never asked me to be involved with in this fight. You never asked me to negotiate the UK TV. You never asked for my opinion on this fight. You didn't want me involved. So don't come running back to me when you're struggling to get a UK TV deal. When you talk about loyalty, you know about what I've done for Kel Brook? He talks about one of the most disappointing things was, you know, I saved the day in the Golovkin pay-per-view. No, you made an absolute fortune in the Golovkin pay-per-view and you were provided with the opportunity that you, your dad, your manager, and your trainer, Dominic Ingle, said, yes, we want this fight. It took them an hour, less than that, to take that fight. It was up at middleweight. They knew they could maintain their belt at, at 147 pound. And it, he took the chance because he was living so badly. And we never knew if this kid would even fight again, let alone get a big fight. You talk about loyalty. When I talk about loyalty, I talk about sitting in a hospital with him when he spunked the weight and didn't even train for Carson Jones, sitting in that hospital with him till five, six o'clock in the morning. I'm talking about flying out to Fort Aventura at four o'clock in the morning to go and be with him and deal with him in hospital and the police there. I've been up to his house dozens of times, sat in his kitchen with him and his dad and tried to get his career back on track. So don't talk to me about loyalty. And what your loyalty is, after I had to give you fights against Jojo Dan, Kevin Bizier, Rabchenko, uh, Zarafa, uh, DeLuca, fights that I've done my conquers on over the years. You made the decision to turn your back on me. Right? I don't have a problem with that. Once you do that, you're gone. I don't have to fight for you anymore. Right? Because if you're with me and you put your trust and your faith in me, I will give you every ounce of my soul. Once you make the decision to walk away from me, don't come back when things ain't working out. And that's what they did. They chose to have me not involved in this fight. And when they couldn't sell it to a UK partner, they come to me. Oh, I really wanted it on Sky for the fans. Don't talk bollocks. You wanted the most money you could get. This is the reality. And I wouldn't even, you know, I, I feel like I have to justify that interview because it was total, total bollocks what I've done for that young man's career. I've saved his career on multiple occasions. Right? It's been probably actually 
say managing Kel, because I was never his manager, but if you like, and we'll use that word, managing Kel's career has probably been the toughest of any career I've been involved with. But we've had some amazing nights. And when I texted him the other day, as he said, he texted me the other day, I said to you, I want you to go and win this fight. Go and shock the world. And I hope he wins. But what I won't have is someone question my loyalty and my integrity. Because when you turn your back on me, when you decide to do things on your own, oh, we always wanted Eddie involved. No, you didn't. You did it all on your own. You, your dad, and this bloke, um, Basil, or whatever his name is, who does Kel's social media. You don't, that's your team. And look at the way they fucked Dominic Ingle. Right? Dominic Ingle has dragged him out. Oh, mate, like of the, the, the lowest depths to get him back on the horse. They didn't want to pay Dominic Ingle either. That's why he's not in the corner. He ain't even got a corner man in his corner. So anyway, I'll leave it there because there's a million other things I want to say. But when you turn your back on me, don't expect my loyalty. That is what I'm saying. Floyd. Hey, 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 that, that's your problem with him. That ain't my problem. Huh? That's your problem with him. Yeah. What you mean? He talking shit about you too. Your own damn promoter. Fuck that man. Oh. Um, how about you get on you get on the <laughs> all right, you go on, on the right side, I go on the left side, and we bro we both throw check hooks at his ass, all right? Damn, wait, wait, he was talking shit about you? <laughs> I don't think he was talking shit about you, T.O. That's a, about him. Right, Bro, I mean, you kind of did just whoop fucking number one fucking, the, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Sass. Yep. Mm -hmm. Too many champions in the sport of boxing right now. Too many champions. Too, it's, not, it's not a such thing as a super champion. Not at all. And I'm not taking nothing away from no fighter. It's too, it's too many belts. And the reason why is too... Let me tell people what's going on in the sport of boxing. Why there are so many different titles and so many different belts. People don't know... You have to pay every for every belt that you win, there's a sanctioning fee. So now if a fighter wins an intern belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. If a fighter has just the regular belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. Then if a fighter is a super champion, then he has to pay a sanctioning fee. This is not good for the sport of boxing. When the sport of box now when a fighter fights, every fighter can every fighter is a champion. Now after you see no belt is now it's like a, a fighter winning a winner winning an amateur trophy. Everybody is a champion. Everybody got, got have a belt. Now we look at the lightweight division, okay? And I want to say uh, uh, the fight the other day was was a hell of a fight. Congratulations uh, uh, to the winner. Um, he done his job. He went out there and and did what he had to do. But if Devin Haney is the WBC champion at lightweight. Right? And Javante Tank Davis is the WBA champion. Now it's safe to say that Telefimo is the champion at, he's the champion, the, the IBF and a WBO champion. But I can't knock, I can't knock what he has done. Because I have to take my hat up to him, you know, for what he has done. And then we, we talk about different fighters pro proving themselves. It's, there's no different from Marquez. He had big on saying, oh, Mayweather was the bigger guy. Remember, at one particular time, in, in 1996, before I went to the, when I, when, I, when, I, when I was in the Olympics, I fought at 125 and a half. It's 125 and a half because it's 57 kilograms. So, in that same year, I turned professional at 130. So then, so we can't keep talking about guys, uh, this guy is a small guy. To be the best, you must take risks, you must take chances, and, and, and it takes going up in weight or going down in weight. That's the sport of boxing. That's how boxing works. And we look at Manny Pacquiao. He done the same thing. He 
take chances. But then when he loses to me, guess what they say? May, Mayweather was the, you know, he was the, he was the, he was the bigger fighter. You know, it's always a catch 22 when it comes to me. So once again, I don't want to knock no fight. But I'm tired of seeing fighters after the fight. Everybody got a championship belt now. Now boxing, all these belts is like trophies. The WBC, the WBA, uh, uh, what, the, the IBM and the WBO, y'all gotta clean Y'all gotta clean this shit up. Y'all have to clean this up. This is bad for boxing. Ain't there such thing as no super champion. You guys are just taking extra money from all these fighters, getting extra money from sanction fees. And, and this goes to my company as well. We need, we, we gotta clean this sport of boxing up. This shit is, this don't look good. Every, when you look on TV now, everybody's a champion. You see all these fighters posing for, you know, posing with a belt. And then we got another guy at Lightweight, which is um, Ryan Garcia. And then I look at Ryan Garcia, and he's a pretty cool fighter. And I, I don't take nothing away from him. He's with uh, Golden Boy, and I want, and I wish him nothing but the best in his career. But before, before you can, and I see Ryan, for, for an example, Ryan Garcia is one of the fighters that got in the ring holding the WBC belt and holding another belt. This is not cool for the sport. And, and do I think he can become world champion? Absolutely he can become champion. Do I think he can beat Javante Tim Davis? Right now, as of right now, absolutely not. Now, that would be a fight next, but Tank cannot overlook uh, Leo Santa Cruz, hell of a fighter, tough competitor, and like I said before, if he went to four weight classes, it's obvious he can fight his ass off. So any, any fighter, that's, that's no different from Canelo. Canelo was able to jump weight classes. You know why? You look, you say, well, Canelo, when he faced me, they said, well, you, you, you beat Canelo at a catch weight. Remember this, you go back and you read the articles, before you can speak on anything, you must do your homework. Canelo was the one that said he was he wanted to fight me at a catchweight class. So me being a smart businessman, guess what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm test you to see if you really want to do it. Now, is he one of the best fighters out there? Pound for pound? Absolutely, he's one of the best out there. But we cannot overlook Javante Tank Davis. He's also one of the best out there, pound for pound. And you look at him, uh, I believe it's a, it's like over a 90% knockout ratio. 95. 95% knockout ratio. So whoever, he, you got to realize this. One thing we know about Javante Tank Davis, you know, he got an equalizer in any hand. So he can hit you with any hand, and it can, it can be good like I, I read. Thank you.